Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is. I do hope that you're having a good time. This is the seventh video in a critical thinking course, the sixth one that will be assigned as homework. And in this class, we have been looking at general arguments, and we've been looking more specifically at deductive arguments, and we're continuing that this week. Let's review. A valid deductive argument is one where if its premises are true, the conclusion must be true too. These arguments are truth-preserving. They do this by following a limited number of operators and the three basic laws of logic. They are the law of identity, that A is the same as itself, the law of non-contradiction, that A cannot both be true and false at the same time when it has the same meaning, and the law of the excluded middle, that A must be either true or false when it has the same meaning in both cases. So I showed you five standard argument forms. There's modus ponens, if P then Q, P therefore Q. So if Dr. K is hungry, then Dr. K will eat at McDonald's. Dr. K is hungry, therefore Dr. K will eat at McDonald's. Modus tollens, if Dr. K is hungry, then Dr. K will eat at McDonald's. Dr. K is not eating at McDonald's, therefore Dr. K is not hungry. Disjunctive syllogism. Dr. K either likes pears or melons. Dr. K does not like pears, therefore Dr. K likes melons. Hypothetical syllogism, if P then Q, if Q then R, therefore if P then R. So, if I am cold, then it is winter. If it is winter, then it is snowing. Therefore, if I am cold, then it is snowing. A or B, if A then C, if B then D, therefore C or D. Either it is winter or summer. If it is winter, then it is cold outside. If it is summer, then it is raining. Therefore, it is cold outside or it is raining. A or B, if A then C, if B then C, therefore C. Either it is summer or it is fall. If it is summer, then it is hot outside. If it is fall, then it is hot outside. Therefore, it is hot outside. So these are the standard forms. So I now want to show you operators. So I want to look more specifically at these if, then, and, or, not words that we've been using and explain how they function in logic. So negation means not. Junction means joining. Conjunction means with joining. Disjunction means apart joining. Commutation means that you can switch things back and forth. And implication is a big word for if then. So what is negation? Negation is this. Negation reverses the truthfulness of a statement. So apples are fruit is true. Apples are not fruit, false. Hokkaido is great, true. Hokkaido is not great, false. Rumoi is Japan's capital, false. Rumoi is not Japan's capital, true. Saturn is the biggest planet, false. Saturn is not the biggest planet, true. Negation works on one claim, or you can put things together and negation works on things as a group, but it works on only one thing at a time. Conjunction. Conjunction means and. Conjunction looks at two claims together. Conjunction says if both claims are true, then the combined thing is true. If either claim is false, then the combined thing is false. So this is the way that conjunction operates. So let's look at a few examples of conjunctions with the things we said. Apples are fruit, Hokkaido is great, Irumoi is Japan's capital, and Saturn is the biggest planet. So Hokkaido is great and apples are fruit is true, so it's true. Lumoi is Japan's capital, apples are fruit. Lumoi is not Japan's capital, so then together it's false. Apples are fruit and Saturn is the biggest planet. Apples are fruit is true, but Saturn is the biggest planet is false. So together it is false. So Hokkaido is great and apples are fruit, this is true. Hokkaido is great, and Rumoi is Japan's capital. Together, this is false. Hokkaido is great, and Saturn is the biggest planet. Together, this is false. Rumoi is Japan's capital, Saturn is the biggest planet. Together, this is false, so this is false. Disjunction, so disjunction with the meaning or. A disjunction is something that looks at two claims. If either claim is true, it's true. So if claim one is true, it's true. If claim two is true, it's true. So. If both claims are false, it's false. So a disjunction is true if either of the claims is true. So it's true when both are true, it's true when one is true. So this means it's only false when both are false. It also looks at two claims together. So let's use the same ones to look at this. So if we have apples are fruit or Hokkaido is great, true. 
If we have apples or fruit, Oerumoi is Japan's capital, true. Apples are great or Saturn is the biggest planet, true. Hokkaido is great or apples are fruit, true. Hokkaido is great or Oerumoi is Japan's capital, true. Hokkaido is great or Saturn is the biggest planet, true. The only one that's false, Rumoi is Japan's capital, or Saturn is the biggest planet. So we have false or false, and this is false. So I want to mention the word commutative. So and and or are commutative. So you learned the concept of commutative when you learned math. So 3 plus 2 is 5, 2 plus 3 is 5, same meaning. 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 2 is 6. Again, same idea, is that we have these things where you can switch the order, doesn't change the value. Well, let's look at a few other things. So which of the following are commutative? Addition, 4 plus 4, commutative. Subtraction, 4 minus 2, not commutative. So 2 minus 4 and 4 minus 2 are not the same. 3 times 3 are the same. 4 divided by 2, this is not commutative. Conjunction is commutative, disjunction is commutative. So, I'm just going to give you the answers here for a second. If you couldn't hear me saying them, I'll repeat this again. Addition is commutative, subtraction is not, multiplication is, division is not, conjunction and disjunction are. This means it doesn't matter which one's on the left, which one's on the right, you can switch them, you can put them in this order, the answer will still be the same. A conditional, on the other hand, is not commutative. So conditional is a sentence like I showed you in the previous weeks. If Dr. K is writing philosophy, then Dr. K is in a good mood. The antecedent is if Dr. K is writing philosophy. The consequent is Dr. K is in a good mood. The conditional operator evaluates whether or not the condition really provides a condition for the consequent. So we're testing, does this condition decide whether the thing on the right actually happens? So let's start with the easy ones. So if apples are fruit, then Hokkaido is great. All right, so both of these are true, so that's true. So apples are fruit, but Rumoi is not the capital of Japan, therefore this is false. So a conditional looks at two statements and is true, except when the second claim is false, but the first claim is true. So what does that mean? So it's looking at two claims, so we're getting four possibilities. So if they are both true, then it is going to be true. If the first claim is true and the second claim is false, then it's going to be false. If the first claim is false, and the second claim is true, it's going to be true. If the first claim is false, and the second claim is false, it's going to be true. So the conditional is not commutative. This matters for saying the sequence. So what's on the left and what's on the right can't be switched in the case of a conditional. Let's consider that and see if we can make sense of that. If it is raining, then the bus is late. This is something that we would consider a true statement in three cases. Case one, it is true if it is raining and the bus is late. Case two, if it is not raining and the bus is late. Case three, if it is not raining and the bus is not late. So in other words, a conditional is true unless we find a true antecedent and a false consequent. Thus, the following conditionals are all true. If Hokkaido is a part of France, then Tokyo is the capital of Japan. Hokkaido is not a part of France. But this means that the antecedent is false, so the conditional is always true. If Hokkaido is a part of Japan, then Tokyo is the capital of Japan. So this we have a true antecedent, true consequent, so it's true. If Hokkaido is a part of France, then Tokyo is not the capital of Japan. So we have false and false. But then we finally have one, if Hokkaido is part of Japan, then Tokyo is not the capital, is false, because we have true and false. So this is the only time that's going to wind up being false. So this is something that often causes trouble, so I wanted to add an explanation to try and help you to understand how this works. So how do we explain this? There's three ways to understand how the conditional table works. Method one, memorize it. So I know that's a weird way to explain it, but you can just think of this as having nothing to do with English if then, or with the Japanese datara or anything like that. And you can just say it this way, that when we have true and true, we get true, true and false, false, false and true, true, false and false, true. This works, this will get you through, this will help you to pass the class. Second method. The second method is the promising analogy. So in this idea, we view a conditional as a promise. We believe the promise unless the antecedent is true, but we do not see the consequence. So I'll give an example. So if you will get an A on the test, I will buy you ice cream. 
you can believe that I've kept my promise if any of the following happen. One, if you get an A on the test and I buy you ice cream. Two, if you don't get an A on the test, then I don't buy you ice cream. Three, if you don't get an A on the test, but I still buy you ice cream. I haven't broken my promise. So anytime that I haven't broken my promise, we can say that I have kept my word. So you can view it this way. The only time you know that I've broken my promise is if you get an A and I do not buy you ice cream. Third method, we, you can use the three laws that we talked about to try to explain it. So we have identity, the excluded middle, and non-contradiction. The excluded middle says that for every claim, we must place it into either the true box or the false box. We don't get any other boxes. So again, true plus true, true, fair enough. True plus false, false, fair enough. What about the other two? And the other two, we have to decide, even though we didn't actually test it, we don't have the antecedent being true. In that case, what we do is that we just set the entire item to be true because we have to pick true or false. And if we picked false, we will produce some problems with arguments and forming valid arguments. So just to review, the operators we have not is when you take one claim and it's the opposite of what it was. And is two claims and it's true when both claims are true. Or is two claims, it's true if either claim is true or if both claims are true. If then is true in every instance except when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. These are our standard operators. P, true, false, not P, false, true. Conjunction, P and Q. So we have four rows now because we have two things that can be either true or false. So two times two is four. So then we have, if they're both true, it's true. But if either of them is false, then it's false. So we have true, false, false, false. So conditional. With a conditional, as I was explaining before, if we look, we have true, false, true, true. With disjunction, if either side is true, we get true. So we have true, 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 false. So I wanted to add something this year that I didn't in previous years. So some students got confused about the conditional based on the way they wrote. Sometimes students would use the word is when talking about things that are conditionals. That is actually a different operator. So the biconditional or equivalence or the word is is something a little bit different than if then. The biconditional is true when both P and Q are true or when both P and Q are false. So this is kind of like something that's an arrow in both directions. There's actually a small difference between equivalence and the biconditional, but not for our class. Don't worry about that. So the biconditional looks like this. So we have P, true, true, false, false, Q, true, false, true, false, true, false, false, true. So this is when they match. That's what the biconditional checks for. So that's why it's kind of like is. So if two things are the same in their truth, then it will be the same. If it's true, it's true. If it's false, it's false. If it's in between, then the entire thing is false. So when they're both true, it's true. When they're both false, it's true, because that's saying they match. When they don't match, the biconditional is false. Another one that some people get tripped up on is the word or. So the English word or can have two meanings. So either or both options are okay, or it can mean pick exactly one option. So. The way that we distinguish this in logic is that we refer to either or both options are okay as inclusive, and we refer to pick exactly one option as exclusive disjunction. So inclusive disjunction, if either side is true or if both sides are true, it's true. So it gives us true, 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 false. With exclusive or, we're going to get false, true, true, false. So that means that it only is true when one option is true. If both options are true, it's false. If both options are false, it's false. If one option is true and the other option is false, then it is true. It doesn't matter which direction. This, again, is commutative. But the one we're going to use in our class is just inclusive or just to keep things simple. But I figured I would explain it because some students get confused or often get questions about this particular issue. So another interesting thing is that exclusive or and the biconditional are mirror images. So exclusive or is true when only one side is true, and biconditional is true when both sides are true or when both sides are false. So these are opposites. So we have false, true, true, false, and true, false, false, true. So 
there's that. This also means that you can create the exclusive or or the biconditional by using the opposite one and the word not around the results. All right, so thank you for your time and attention. I know this is one of the harder videos to understand. I hope that you bring any questions you have to class. I look forward to your time and attention.